Hi there, it's Amy from Cakes With Faces and today is all about summer festivals in Japan. I've got a selection of summer festivals that you might not have heard of and they all have something unusual about them. Like this one, the Rampage Festival, also known as the Fire and Violence Festival. More about that one later. And there's new Japan videos on my channel every other Thursday if you want to subscribe. If you're new to my channel, there will be new travel vlogs one day when it's safe to travel again. Now there's lots of festivals or matsuri all around Japan all year round and I'd really encourage you to look them up and go to one if you can. I was really struck by how many festivals there are. When I think of similar events in England, it just doesn't seem like there's so many. From the festivals that I've been to, and there's videos about them on my channel if you want to see what they're like, the main thing about them has just been the atmosphere. You don't always understand what's going on or why, like you don't understand the chanting if it's all in Japanese, but it's just interesting to walk around and see what that is and just soak up the atmosphere. It's always fine to go along and see what's going on as a foreigner, it's not a faux pas. Everyone's welcome to go along and join in the fun. And the other main thing is the food. There are so many different types of street food and snacks that you don't really find in restaurants or in other places in Japan. And they're not always types of food that you'll be familiar with or that you'll recognize. So it's just fun to walk around, see what's happening, try different sorts of food and join in. And there's a video on my channel about street food that I tried at a festival if you wanna see what it's like. In the summer in Japan, there's lots of fireworks festivals and the other major festivals you might have heard of like Obon and Tanabata. But today I've got some more unusual festivals that you might find interesting. The first one is Fukugawa Hachiman Festival, also known as Fukugawa Matsuri. That's at Tomioka Hachiman Shrine in eastern Tokyo. It's one of Tokyo's largest festivals. I just couldn't believe these photos of how many people there are there. These are all from ikimasho.net. People carry portable shrines called mikoshi through the streets and everyone else throws water at them. It's supposed to be to purify the shrines, but really I think it's to cool everyone down because in August it's really hot and humid in Japan. People from the shrine throw sacred water, kids get involved with paddling pools and plastic buckets, and even the fire department join in with their fire hoses. It happens every year in August, but the major festival only happens once every three years, just to keep it fresh. Next is the Akita Kanto Festival, which is one of Tohoku's three great summer festivals. It happens every year in August in Akita City to pray for a good harvest. They have these bamboo poles with paper lanterns attached called Kanto. They're so tall, look how many lanterns there are. They're meant to look like the ears of rice plants waving in the wind and they're supposed to scare away evil spirits. During the festival there's a display where they balance the kanto on one hand, on their hips, on their shoulders and on their head. You might not think it's that impressive because how heavy can paper lanterns be but the largest ones are up to 50 kilograms and 12 meters long with 46 lanterns. And the lanterns have real candles inside, which seems like quite the fire hazard, given how bamboo and paper are so flammable. If you're there at any other time of year when the festival isn't on, you can see the kanto at a museum called Niburi Nagashi Kan. Sometimes they have demonstrations and you can even have a go at balancing the kanto yourself. If you are there in August, a lot of Tohoku summer festivals overlap, so there's a good chance you'll be able to visit several of them in one trip. This calendar is from Japan Rail Times. This seems like a pretty good idea because it's so hot in Japan in the summer and the further north you go, the less hot it is. Japan's top three fireworks festivals are also in this part of Japan, in Akita, Ibaraki and Niigata prefectures. Some of them have fireworks competitions which are pretty creative with all sorts of different shapes. And from what I've seen in videos, fireworks in Japan can be pretty impressive and definitely a level up from fireworks displays I've seen here in England. 
Next is the Pantu Festival, which takes place in Okinawa on an island called Miyakojima, which looks like paradise. In September, they have a pretty unusual festival. People dress up in costumes made of leaves and mud with masks on and chase after people to smear mud on them. Their aim is to get mud on everything. The legend goes that supernatural creatures used to descend on the village to chase away bad spirits and bring good luck and any person, baby or house that gets mud splashed on them will have good luck for the next year. So if these guys chase after you, you don't want to run away from them. Although in real life, I think you might. Lots of people complained about this festival because of how messy it is. People didn't want mud on their cars, tourists didn't want to get mud smeared on them, and it made a lot of children cry when they had a monster chasing after them and giving them a big messy hug. So because of all these complaints, they decided not to cancel the festival, but to do it anyway and not tell anyone when it's going to be until right before it happens. So this one can be a tricky one to catch. Next is a similar festival, although a bit less messy. The Namahage Festival takes place in Akita Prefecture in northern Japan in February, when demons come down from the mountains to scare bad children. Namahage are a type of demon, a type of oni, and the only way to get rid of them is to give them mochi, which sounds like a pretty good deal for the demons. Really, it's just to scare children into being good. At New Year, parents get their friends and relatives to dress up as Namahage and come round to their house. And then in February, there's a big fire at the shrine and the demons come down from the mountains. People dress up as the Namahage with fake knives and flaming torches and shout Nakuko wa Inega, which means are there any crybabies around? They chase after the kids and scoop them up and then everyone has roasted mochi over the bonfire. The demons snatch the mochi and run away and that's it. And definitely no one has nightmares after that. Next is the Fukushima Waraji Festival in Fukushima in August. A waraji is a straw sandal, and at this festival, a giant straw sandal is paraded around the streets. Everyone tries to touch it because it's supposed to give you strong, healthy legs. The sandal is 12 meters long. It doesn't quite look in proportion. It's definitely longer than it is wide. It's based on another procession called the Akatsu Mairu procession, which has been going on for 400 years in honor of the local mountain in Fukushima city. That one also involves a giant sandal, and if you put the two together, they actually form a matching pair for a giant with very long, narrow feet. Next, we've got another festival that people complained about. It's called the Muon Bon Odori, which means silent Bon Odori. Bon Odori is a major summer festival that happens all around Japan in August with lots of music and dancing. In Tokai City near Nagoya, people complained about the noise of all the music when the festival was going on. So instead of cancelling it, they turned it into a kind of silent disco. They gave everyone wireless earphones so the music and dancing could continue, just like a regular silent disco, but with traditional Japanese lanterns and yukata. Next, we've got Abare Matsuri, which is in July. It's in Noto in Ishikawa Prefecture, which is near Kanazawa. This one's also known as the Rampage Festival or the Fire and Violence Festival. It all started 350 years ago when there was an epidemic, a plague in the town. People prayed for help, and this time it wasn't the Amavi that came to save them. Instead, they were told to hold a festival, and then afterwards, a bee came along and stung all the sick people, and then they were cured. So now they still hold the festival every year in celebration. On the first day, portable shrines are paraded around the town. At night time, seven metre tall wooden torches are lit. There's drumming and more parades. And then on the second day, the portable shrine is completely destroyed. First, it's smashed on the ground, then it's thrown in the river, and then it's burned on a bonfire. So that's where the fire and violence comes in. Priests come along to inspect the shrine and make sure it's been properly destroyed. And the whole thing is just really chaotic and wild with lots of shouting and lots of fire. 
Maybe destroying the shrine is like destroying contaminated items from the epidemic. I don't know if that's true, that's just my guess. I'm just disappointed there aren't more bees involved because it was the bee that cured everyone in the original story. I think bumblebee lanterns would be really cute. So there's just a few unusual festivals for you. As I said, I can't believe there are so many. When I read this book, The Japanese Mind, which is all about Japanese philosophies and cultural traditions, it seemed like a lot of them are derived from the rice harvest, when everyone used to have to work together to grow the rice. So that's why in Japanese culture, it's all about everyone getting along harmoniously and being polite and not upsetting other people. And it is a collectivist society. So when you think about it, festivals bring the community together, so maybe that's why there are so many of them, so everyone can get together, have fun and celebrate as a community. Or maybe festivals just give people a chance to let off steam. Japan can be quite a restrictive society. Obviously it's a generalisation, but there are a lot of unwritten rules about being polite and fitting in and not speaking your true mind. So then when you get to the Matsuri, there's fire, it's loud, you can smear mud on people and really let yourself go. I don't know if any of these things are true, it's just my ideas. So tell me in the comments what you think. As I said, there are lots more unusual festivals that didn't fit in this video, so if you'd like a part two with more of them, tell me in the comments, and I'll see you not next week, but the week after on Thursday. Bye-bye.